Hello, hello. We are live on both, and we'll give folks a few minutes to get on here. If you're on, you can say hello. That way we know who's watching. And, uh... Hi, Chris. Hey, Megan Story. Um, make sure to say hello. Somebody just popped on on Facebook, but I can't tell who it is. It tells me on Instagram who it is. Um, While we're waiting, I was I was simply amazed by the triple play, uh, Megan. I saw that and. So that, oh, was, that was that cool. was incredible. I tra I tagged Sports Center. I'm hoping they saw it. <laughs> yes, so cute. Um, say hello. Watch you pop on. Hey Matthew. Hey Kendall. Say hi. I can't tell who that is. It shows pictures on Kevin's. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I can't tell. It's little bitty, tiny, teeny tiny pictures. Hi, Jeff and Jenny. We're going to be in your neck of the woods this summer in June. Late June. Yes. So we need to connect. Um, maybe he will have the Braves one day, Megan. <laughs> Tell him we're cheering him on. If y'all hear a lot of clanging around, we are in a parking lot. Yeah. Um, at a Bass Pro Shop, and so we do not have our air conditioning on. We have all of our windows open. It's gorgeous outside. It's like, um, but the wind is blowing pretty good, so the blinds keep blowing up and then slamming well, back Well, the down, traffic. But. I'm afraid you're going to probably hear the traffic noises, too, because there's a road light right there. There's Caroline. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, yeah. Yes, we need to for sure... Um, connect to them. We're going to be with them. I believe it's the third week in June. I will send we'll you a message. message. Yeah. Girls, help me remember to send Bix a message when we, hang, when we get done. They'll remember better than me. So I'll shoot you a message with our dates. Um, say hello if you're jumping on. Um, don't forget to um, share our video. That way more people can tune in every week. We like to be able to say hello. So if you'll just hit share for us, we would appreciate it. We had fancy dinner tonight. I, there's nothing that says McDonald's say, on my cup, but... You have to go all the oh, way to, there the, we go. to the little app thing. That was our fancy dinner. McDonald's. We did have fancy, <laughs> fancy, fancy dinner tonight. But at least <laughs> when we're in New York, all the drinks are 99 cents like they're supposed to be. A dollar. But, yeah, a dollar, whatever. Um, yeah, but even with all six of us, McDonald's is not as cheap as it should be. Not, not as cheap as it used to be. Yeah, anyway. It's still a lot eat. of money for McDonald's. They but. always want ice cream. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Ice cream and coffee. Thanks for being patient with us tonight. So we um, have been traveling the last few days, just a little bit along. We're making our way west, and so we've traveled like... You, you've heard us say before we like to do three or four hours in a day because um, it's just not too much. And so we've done that the last few days. And so we did that. Few days? Uh, we did that Friday, Saturday, and today. Right? And tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Tomorrow's not quite as far. But um, so anyway, we um, traveled and we are in a parking lot tonight. Here's a funny story. So we planned a parking lot hop all weekend. So do parking lots Friday night, Saturday night, and tonight. Um... And it turns out, we happened to get to looking at the weather, and there has been a storm that has been brewing right up in here. Um, and it brought in some warm weather. So it was actually, yesterday it was like 88 in the afternoon. Which I know for our Georgia people, it's been, you know, mid to high 90s for two weeks now. But that's the first warm weather we've had. And so we got to thinking, hmm... Do we really take everybody out to eat and run the generator all night? Or is it cheaper just to go stay at an RV park? Uh, so we ended up in an RV park because then we could cook and run the air. But we left Maine and it was 48 degrees. Yes. We got on Friday morning. On Friday morning. And then we got to where? We got to... We stayed... Where did we go Friday night? Oh, we just went to Southern Maine. We went That's to right. We Portland, stayed at Cracker Barrel. 
And, and so it was 48. And it was 48 that morning. We left that morning and went to Vermont. Um, Vermont and we got there and it was 88 degrees. So yeah, we, 40 that degrees was in one day. Quite the swing for us. That and, sounds like uh, a South Georgia um, spring day. Spring. The girls were all excited because they got to wear actual spring type summer type clothes for church this morning. We so got to wear dresses. they yes. finally got to wear some dresses that they had been waiting to wear because <laughs> yes. we missed out on a couple Sundays with um, yeah, sickness. But it probably would have been too cool anyway. So. Yep. Anyway, so we got some warm weather. So we stopped in Vermont last night and spent the night in the RV park, got to do some laundry, cook dinner, run the air on the electric rather than having to run our generator all night. And then it worked out too because we were able to go to church this morning without the RV behind us. So, which was nice considering the location. Yeah, when we came through Vermont the last time we stayed in Stowe, Vermont, and I had a chance to meet with a pastor um, he had been a part of a church that had started in Burlington, Vermont, and had just been recently been sent out from that church to Montpelier. And um, so he and I met in Montpelier, and at that point they had a small group that was meeting in, the, um, in that area in their home, but they did not have a church yet. And so um, I've been keeping in touch with him, and we've been praying for them, and um, they actually launched their church on Easter Sunday and they um, have been doing well. Um, the place where they have been meeting is, um, is a senior event center and when they signed the deal with them to rent the space, they already had a couple of things on their calendar for last week and this week. So we ended up meeting in yet another location um, mm -hmm. we can add to our list. This sure. was the Delicate Delicatessen, I think. No. Delicate Decadence. De Delicate Decadence. Decadence. I'm sorry. It, it was, was a bakery. <laughs> a bakery, yes. Um, Cute which little was, bakery. It was in this really neat, beautiful old building in kind of a downtown area. Um, just really neat. The building was tall and had several things in it and where you could see. It was yeah, people cool kept walking in behind the pastor and um, walking in to go do yoga. They were carrying their yoga mats. <laughs> yeah. so. It was really neat, though, um, that we got to go with them today. So as it turned out, um, Aaron, who's the pastor, was not speaking today, but he was not speaking today because his dad was um, speaking. So his dad was a pastor, uh, actually through the North American Mission Board. His dad planted a couple of churches. His dad planted the church where he was at in Burlington, but when he went there, his dad was no longer pastoring that church. There had been another guy come along and was... Um, pastoring and so when he got the opportunity to be sent out he asked his dad to come along with him and help him and um, so yeah. it was neat just to hear um, about his their parents, relationship and his parents actually live in an RV yeah. and um, because they had planned to kind of retire in Florida because that's where they were both um, originally are from spent some of their earlier years had planned to retire in Florida and so she said they sold their house and had an RV and Plans, that was a really loud motorcycle, sorry. <laughs> uh, planned to stay in Florida until the kids called and said, can you come up here for a while? And so they were actually staying in an RV park. And they just had their first child in February, so. Um, it was good incentive. The day before Valentine's Day, and so it was good incentive for them to, to be able to come and help with the church, but also to be close to grandkids. Yes, so we enjoyed getting to talk to all of them this morning. So you can pray for Aaron and Jenna um, as they, it was very interesting to hear, um, and I think for some of you that are watching this, probably there's an aspect of this that would be mind-boggling. Um, just because, you know, for being from the Bible Belt with a lot of um, uh, spiritual influence or religious influence, maybe that's the best word. Um, his dad talked about how his dad was born in Connecticut or from Connecticut, Connecticut I think. And he, he talked about that he had never, no one had ever said anything about Jesus to him. He had never heard one thing about God or Jesus um, until he was in his late 20s and living in Florida. And he, um, somebody, his neighbor told him about Jesus and he, he met the Lord at age 29. I think he, he was 29 years old. Yeah, a neighbor shared the gospel with him. And then within two weeks, he was at a funeral for a family member. And the pastor at the funeral shared the gospel. So it made two times that he had heard the gospel in just a short period of time. And um, 
but it, it, was at home and opened up his Bible and started reading and ended up giving his life to Christ there in his bedroom. And, uh, but it so also explained, story. Uh, you know, their his desire, his family's desire to be here in the Northeast in a place where, um, and sharing the gospel in a place where it's, you know, there are some pockets that are void of that. So it was just cool to see the whole thing all the way around today and to meet them. So pray for Aaron and Jenna. Um, their church is called... Imago Christi. Yes. Um, image of Christ. And he talked about how everywhere we go, we carry the image of Christ with us. And um, so that's why they call their church what they do. Um, just as a reminder that we carry the image of Christ and what a great reminder for us to think about and to um, really look at because how are, how are we doing at carrying the image of Christ everywhere we go and so they're, I encourage you with that tonight. They're right outside of uh, Montpelier in a little community. We think it's pronounced Barry. It's spelled B-A-R-R-E. So of course I would have said bar but we think it's Barry. Yes, um, Vermont, and so that's it's kind of like South located. Georgia, where around our home there was a lot of the windows and the wind, or just going. There crazy. was a lot of places that weren't pronounced how you thought they would be pronounced. Yeah. So, so anyway, so that was our day today. So now we are all set up. Um, we have crossed into Upstate New York for the evening. We are looking forward. I see Sandra just stopped on. We're looking forward to spending a couple days with Kevin's cousin, Sandra. Um, we always like to stop by and hang out with her when we're in the area. We've done that a couple times, so we're looking forward to that. And then we will make our way at the end of the week to our last of the Send cities in New England, and we will be in Pittsburgh for about a week. But tomorrow, we're, there's some friends of ours that are um, actually in the Niagara Falls area tomorrow, and so we're going to get to see them and catch up with them while they're there, so we're excited about that as yep, well. Some of our hometown people will get to see. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing them tomorrow. Um, so anyway, we ended up, oh, let's see, we came to you live last Sunday night from Maine and we were all kind of getting ourselves back um, to a normal state. Men. Yes. Uh, so we spent the first part of the week, uh, the girls are almost finished with school and so Close. we did a lot of school last week we got to do some hiking and we enjoyed that we got that's the go. good thing about being in an rv you can quarantine real easy yeah and uh so then we we spent some time um social distancing as well one day on a pond um saturday we went out and we about that out kayaked there. a little bit we talked about that last week and then on thursday i guess it was we got everything done early and that late that afternoon we went and went on a little hike some would not call it a little hike but i called it a little hike um it was short in distance but i just posted that video on our youtube channel so if you haven't seen that yet i encourage you to go over there and check that video out and um we had a good time hiking and kayaking and so yeah so anyway, we enjoyed our time in Maine despite the uh, hurdles that we had of some unwarranted or unexpected and unwanted germs. <laughs> yep. So anyway, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really. Mm, I don't think so. I think that pretty much covers <laughs> it. Um, one of the things, I'm trying to think what, if anybody asked any questions this week. Um... One of the things they would probably be, people would probably be interested to know real quick before we get off as far as fuel. Um, <laughs> yeah, the gas prices are about to kill us. That's what. Well, and we've definitely seen some increase. Yes. It was exciting yesterday, though. I used one of our fuel cards and saved like a dollar ten a gallon. It was fantastic. It was significant. I was so excited. I got gas. I, I got our diesel for like, I forget, 542 maybe. So calculate what that normal price yeah, was. It was. Yes. It's it's very very sad that I get excited about 542 a gallon, but for real. Um, but if you are traveling, that is something that is an area that Kevin is constantly um, researching and learning and looking for savings and discounts. And um, so all of that to say, there are several um, tricks and things that he recommends if you're going to be traveling this summer. We had some. Some of our good friends from Tifton that also have an RV, they're going to be traveling late this summer. We messaged back and forth 
with them for a little while this week just sharing some of our apps that we use some of the uh there's a couple of di a discount programs some different things that kevin has found that you know every little bit counts in that area at this point just so. shoot casey a message she can <laughs> forward you those um if you're interested yep. in any of that information if you're going to be traveling or if you have or if you're a diesel um then and even if you're not um even if you're just i know a lot of you are from the tifton area um there's an app that we use that gets us a certain number of um cents off every time we use it um there's a few people in tifton that use it on a regular basis and um if you use my reference code then you get 15 cents off the first fill up 15 cents a gallon off that first fill up but we also get 15 cents off so if you sign up and do that it helps you it helps us and then um yeah. so let us know if you want any of that information um somebody just asked a question and said what is the biggest material need um that most churches have um so <laughs> as far as physical need yeah i was i was going to say volunteers but i don't i don't guess that's material um, that's that's people so um, and honestly we I don't know a lot of the places that are people that we have come across so far um, would you say 85 to 90 percent of them are sent by ascending church yeah a lot of them have a sending church that is um, kind of supporting mm -hmm. them as they go and a lot of them are very early on in the process so a lot of their material things have been met <laughs> here early on right um a lot of them are it's having... the churches that you get into the two and three year old churches that some of their partnerships are going away and or have you dissolved know or... a lot of them they commit to the first year or two years some maybe three years but a lot of them don't commit beyond that and then depending on um, things but as far as material needs we don't see um it a even, lot. No, we don't see a lot. And we've heard some really cool God stories in that area, too. Like, I'm thinking of one church outside of the D.C. area that um, the guy <coughs> between... Uh, it was kind of a whole different, like, connection story. Anyway, a church that had not made it through COVID found out that he was planning a church. And they basically gave him a whole trailer full of, some of their stuff. You know, sound, system, sound equipment, different, all yeah. kinds of different, those kinds of things. A lot of these, um, you know, all these people, well, not all, but 95% are renting buildings or renting space or being gifted some space or whatever the case may be. Um, honestly, I really think that we see more of these people have, in most cases, moved away from their family, um, moved to areas that just aren't, you know, they're... It's the reason they've moved there to plant a church. It's not a gospel-centered area, and so they are literally spending all of their time pouring into people and developing relationships, because relationships, developing a relationship is how you can earn the trust of someone to and to show them Jesus. And so I think just by us spending time with them and being interested in what they're doing, I think that's more what we see. Just. And like Aaron, Aaron and I, t I, we text, you know, every two or three weeks maybe. And uh, I pray for them on a regular basis. I keep up with them that way. And, you know, it, it means the world to him just to know that there's someone out there praying. But then a lot of times we pray for someone, but we leave it there, which is great. It's great to pray for people. But the encouragement that they get when... You know, just responding to a newsletter and saying, hey, praying for you, read your newsletter, those kind of things. <clears throat> you know, these guys, they don't get much feedback. Um, and, and they experience the whole isolation yeah. thing as well, you know, as they get out there um, with just their families trying to build community. Um, and that was one of the first things that um, he mentioned today was that, you know, when we got there today, he and his wife both mentioned that... You know, we thank you for being an encouragement and remembering us, and so I think that's the most important thing. So anyway, that was kind of a long answer for a short question, but and it didn't really answer the question. But. It gives you an idea if there are any like special projects or things that we special things that we hear of. Um, we're always um, we will always be quick to pass that along to all the people that you know we know and love. So yep. I'm trying to think if there was anything. There, there was one um, 
one church that was doing a project they they did feeding bags um, at the school and they were doing that on a regular basis and so there was some cost involved with that that was um, one need that I remember I would have to go back and remember which church that was um, but it was a good opportunity that they had um, in partnership with the school um, that may have been the same one you were talking about that was gifted the um, trailer um, um, so anyway Daniel we we're go. excited that looking ahead to um, be able to we'll have, I think we said this last week but we'll head into the the um, send cities that are in the Ohio Valley and Midwest um, for the month of June and the first part of July. Yep. Um, we've been on here long enough, but I always say, and I just saw this and made me think that at some point I need to um, take a minute and share kind of how we route plan and reservation plan, and we'll do that another time though. But anyway, as usual, if you ever have any questions, shoot them to us. We love answering questions yeah. just about our crazy life and all the different aspects of it. So um don't forget to share the video we love y'all check out the youtube video i was video. about to say there's new youtube see some of the video fun we've had so you can like go see some of that yes yeah, so you can like and subscribe to the youtube channel um but it's good to see y'all tonight i hope that you don't melt those of you there in south georgia don't melt um and we hope you have a great week let us know if there's any way we can pray for you this week see you soon bye